Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Terry Zachary and I am the developer of Handmaster Plus. Welcome back to our top 10 countdown of the benefits of proper hand exercise and grip strength training. Today's video will be focused on benefit number five, which is a strong, healthy, stable carpal tunnel. Now this is one of my favorite body areas to study and I'm probably one of the few people in the entire world <laughs> that can say that. But the reason is, is it's really a fascinating structure. And it's, it's very simply made up of the bones of the wrist as the base and the side and on top is the transverse carpal ligament and that forms a tunnel and through this tunnel passes eight finger flexor tendons and one thumb flexor tendon as well as the very important median nerve. In cases of carpal tunnel syndrome, of course, it is that median nerve uh, that gets compressed and that's where we have all the problems. So how do we keep this structure balanced? And what does this have anything to do with proper hand exercise and grip strength training? Well, it has everything to do. Let's look at a little bit of the anatomy. Now we said we have nine muscles that close the hand. Four of those muscles actually originate from this transverse carpal ligament. Okay, The first one is the short uh, thumb flexor. The second one is the pinky finger flexor. But then as well, the two muscles of opposition both originate, the thumb and the pinky finger muscles of opposition, originate also on that transverse carpal ligament. So when these four of these muscles contract themselves, that's going to affect exactly the collapse of the carpal tunnel itself. Okay, I think that's quite obvious. The second thing I'd like to say that is a concern always in the structure of the carpal tunnel is the wrist flexors. Okay, so there's three main wrist flexors. One of the wrist flexors, the palmaris longus, uh, its tendon inserts directly into that transverse carpal ligament again. The second flexor tendon is on the thumb side and it passes through a layer of that transverse carpal tunnel ligament to insert onto some metacarpals of your hand. On the pinky side or the ulnar side, the tendon, the flexor tendon on that side, the third flexor tendon, actually inserts directly on the pisiform bone and the hamate bone, which are the pinky side borders of the tunnel. So whenever we're doing flexion, there's going to be, there's going to, whenever we're doing wrist flexion specifically, excuse me, we're going to see that there is pressure on the borders of the carpal tunnel. The other thing that we talk about is whenever I grip something, what passes through the carpal tunnel is we said there is eight finger flexor tendons that pass through the tunnel. So whenever I'm flexed, and especially if the wrist is flexed and the fingers are flexing, I not only have pressure on the outside of the tunnel, outside of the tunnel, but I also have pressure from within the tunnel as these finger flexor tendons are flexed. The third thing is that thumb, that thumb flexor goes through, the long thumb flexor goes through the tunnel as well. So there's more pressure from the inside of the tunnel and from the outside of the tunnel and that can easily cause inflammation or thickening of the structures which can affect the inside of that tunnel. So it sounds awful. But what do we do about it? Here's where when you study proper hand exercise, you get excited. What we do is we simply say that instead of taking the hand through a small squeeze only motion, which is a very small range of the motion of what the hand is capable of, you can see that when we do this, the carpal tunnel actually physically shows collapse. What we want to do is tell people, strengthen the muscles that close the hand and open and spread the hand. Close, open and spread close. How's that for some camera magic? That's all we're doing is we're following the natural full range of motion of the of the hand. Handmaster Plus was developed to do just that. Strengthens the nine muscles that close the hand and the nine muscles that open and spread the hand. When we're talking about carpal tunnel syndrome, you have muscles in the side of the hand that spread that pinky open 
and we have muscles in the side of the thumb that spread that thumb open. We also have muscles in the hand that spread the hand. Okay, so we have closing muscles and we have opening and spreading muscles. When we're talking about carpal the carpal tunnel structure itself, we better be thinking about how to open and keep these muscles that open and spread the hand and thus keep that carpal tunnel nice and wide. That's how proper hand exercise stimulates strength, stability, and health at the carpal tunnel. Now you might ask one more question. Why do we want to close the hand when we're talking about carpal tunnel? Doesn't that shut the hand down? Why wouldn't we just open? Not a bad question, but I want to deal with one of the other things that happens in carpal tunnel syndrome is that we get poor fluid flow through to the carpal tunnel, through the carpal tunnel, and away from the carpal tunnel. We see that pregnancy, diabetes, and some of these poor peripheral circulation conditions lend to higher rates of carpal tunnel syndrome. That's why we take the hand through its full natural range of motion to stimulate as much blood flow and as much drainage away as we can so that fluid flow to, through, and away from the carpal tunnel keeps maximized and healthy. Hey, thanks for sticking with us. Four through one are fascinating. I hope you'll stick with us. Uh, you can subscribe to this channel. Uh, we'll see you in the future. The rest are fascinating.